Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been chewing on a lot lately. Um, uh, where do I begin? Let's start with prayer. Father, I thank you for this moment in time. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're about to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me and permeate the atmosphere with what you would have me say. Do what only you can do. Speak to us all at the same time, yet say something different. Touch our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our lives in the name of Jesus. Let this moment together be unforgettable, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. I hope you guys are doing well this week. Um, I, 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 I've been, been, um, doing some really big things lately. I can't talk about the actual thing yet because it's still in the works and it's not only my thing to talk about, but, um, what I can say is this. Thing uh, requires sending an email to somebody. And when you've been working um, at something for years and not getting anywhere, you tend to get a little bit discouraged. And um, anyway, so I sent an email to someone really big. And, like, when I sent the email, like, first of all, I sent a general, you know how sometimes websites have the, this general, these general um, email addresses, like, they may start with info, they may start with Hello. Um, they may they may start with those general um, terms, and then you have the specific email addresses like like Rachel at emancipationfilms.ca, which is not a real domain name yet. Guys, um, that address doesn't exist. It was just, a, it's just an example. Um, but, but so I sent it to a web, um, the website, but I sent it to one of those general email boxes. And you know, sometimes with the general email boxes, if you don't send a specific email as it to a specific person's email. It can sit in those general email boxes forever. So I sent it to the general email boxes because that's that's all they had on their website. All they had on their website was an email address, not even a phone number. Which is weird, but yeah, that's what happened. So I sent it to the specific, uh, to the general email, and I didn't get anything back. So I sent, and I couldn't find the person's specific email address. So what I did was use the Use the domain of the general email address and just put, because I knew the person's name from Google, so I put all, all, all variations of the person's name and, like, 
nine of the variations came back and I was about to give up. And um, then I just thought, you know what, why don't you add a double letter to the person's name? And then I, I was like, because I tried the person's name dot and the domain. Tried the person's full name dot and the domain. Tried a couple of different addresses and nothing worked. And I was like, okay. Um, and then I tried just the person's name, because on, on Google, when I, when I spoke to my Google and said the person's name, they call, Google, Google called uh, the person by their short form. So I said, um, since I'm sending a letter to Los Angeles, and I know uh, they're kind of um, relaxed over there. Why don't I try? Um, why don't I try the per per person's first name? And instead of j just one letter, why not do it as a double letter? Because this name I've seen, you can either. Um, do their short form as a double letter or a single letter. And I tried the single letter first, and it didn't work. So I tried, why not just add an another and make it a double letter? When I added the double letter, it worked, guys. It worked, guys. It didn't come back. And I even, uh, I sent the, the same test email again, and all of them came back, except this one. And then I, I sent the, the file, I cut and copied the, orig the original file and sent it again with the links to my social media and the document and the unlisted video I created. So I sent it and it didn't come back. But I, I, I'm so nervous because this is so big uh, for my career as a producer and a writer and a whatever. This is so big that I, even though I sent it and that last time didn't come back, my head started spinning out of control. I'm like, oh my God, what if, what if her computer doesn't work or what if that's not an address she uses all the time and what if whatever, like, I know they have a lot. Why would why would they pay attention to me? Although I know what I'm sending is great, and I know the person attached to, to it would, I know the people attached to it would love it, because it would be something that I would want to see. So I started going through all of this in my mind. I, so much so, I said, like, I'm, um, so, I sent the uh, professional email, nice and professional, and it didn't come back, but I, I just couldn't believe that on my trial and error, it worked, and the domain name is, is a different domain domain name. It's not a .com or .ca or .uk. It's something that I haven't seen before and all that stuff. And it's a small company. So I'm like, yes, it must have got to where 
because all the all the things bounced back and didn't uh did all the other ones I tried bounced back so and this one didn't so but I was so disbelieving that I actually got the right email address that I sent this long rambling email that was full of wrong words and all that because I use Dragon Dragon Naturally Speaking to type which is a voice activated thing. So I use all I use that to type and I just uh use that to type and it was I my head was spinning so out of control I, I'm like what if this what is that what if this what is that um and then because I couldn't believe I actually found the right email address um so yeah so but even though I, after I found the right email address, I celebrated for a bit, but more worries started to come. I was like, what if her email is not working? What if that is, that is a company email, but not the one she uses for her clients? And what if, what if this, what if that, and my head started spinning out of control so much so that I wrote another email and said, okay, uh, I'm, I'm Rachel, I'm, I'm from here, I'm from this, could you please get back to me, uh, just to know that you got it, I, I know it's going to take a while to get through. I just want to know if you got my email. And that wasn't enough. I was even... But when I looked at that email, I was like, oh my God, there are like so many spelling mistakes. And guys, there were only like two spelling mistakes. But I wanted to be professional. So I said... Sorry for all the typos, blah, blah, blah. Only two little typos, by the way. But my mind magnified it. I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. She's not going to understand me. What am I doing? What did I just do? And blah, blah, blah. My head was spinning out of control so much. I'm like, what if it didn't get to her? What if it get, gets to someone else and that someone else right, just tries to steal my idea? And you know how your head spins out of control because um, you don't believe that you're worthy? Like, that's what ha- happened to me. And in all this spinning, the Lord says, calm down. I need you to first take a few deep breaths. I need you to to watch an old sermon of yours called Stopping the Spin Cycle. So I went back to my old to an old sermon of mine called uh, Stopping the Spin Cycle. And I watched that sermon, it's about 20 minutes long, and it ministered to me so much in in that moment, where my mind was spinning out of control, where my heart was spinning out of control. He's like, Rachel, you've worked for years on different things to, to get into the industry, but you, you know not only on this thing, but you've worked on other things, and the answer will be no. But trust me, the answer will be yes. 
stop letting your mind spin out of control. And as I was you as I was viewing this sermon, it was like the Lord was using me, my sermon from four years ago, to talk to me. And it ministered to me so much. And then I was watched. And then a, a social media post from the Today Show came up with, with, with Hoda, Hoda and Jenna talking about Ju, Julia Louis-Dreyfus and, and her cancer diagnosis. And that led into Hoda talking about her diagnosis and talking about um, uh, can what Renee Brown calls uh, candle blower ad- outers, like when you have such good things to say, when you say, oh yeah, I got the job, and they say, oh yeah, but you might not keep that forever. And they call themselves realists, but negativity is where they live. So all of this, all of this I was listening to caused me to say, Rachel, stop spinning. You can't do anything um, about it. If her computer's broken, you can't do anything about it. If she doesn't get it, you can't do anything about it. If it, if the people that it is about don't like it, you can't do anything about it. You did all what you can do. Stop spinning. Stop letting your mind come up with scenarios that have, haven't happened yet. And, and enjoy the the moment what you did Rachel was really big so enjoy the moment and I know some of you today are are like me when even you do something real huge in your life or real big for you you don't stop and enjoy it you worry about all the negative things that could happen and you know, this morning I was like, I was like, and I was so nervous that I even thought morbid thoughts. I was like, what if I die before, like we, could, like I get this off the ground? And and the Lord said, Rachel, calm down. You're spinning again. You've got your mind out of control. He's like, you are not going to die before this thing. You will see it through. It will start start off your career. It will happen. Believe me. You've worked for years, and now it's your time. And now I'm, now I'm here to 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 tell you. Don't let your mind talk you out of things that God is blessing you with, with the what ifs, with the what if. You can't control whatever other people do. I can't control what that person does with my email. I can't control what, you know, what happens, whether it got to another person by accident which it didn't, by the way, because that, that uh, domain is really strange. It's an ME, not a .com or .ca or anything like that. Um, and it, it got through. He's like, don't talk yourself out of what I'm blessing you with. And he wants, to, he wants me to say that to you guys, too. Don't talk yourself out of what God is trying to bless you with. Sometimes um, because of our sense of unworthiness, 
we try and talk ourselves out of things. But don't be your own kind of lower outer. And sit in the moment. Get excited about this moment. It's huge. You got that job. You, you know, you, you did this. Celebrate what you did. Celebrate what he's doing. Don't come up with every negative thing that it could feel. Don't come up with the what ifs. Because reality is, saints, you can't control what happens. You only can control what you did. And think of the miraculous, the miraculous way that he's made so far. Think of all the things that he's shown you to say that, yes, you're going in the right way. There is so many signs that he showed me that, that I was going in the right way, but instead of um, doing that, focusing on those things, I'm focusing on, oh, my God, what if things go wrong? To the extreme part, I'm like, what if I die before before I can arrange this or produce this? What if it doesn't work out? And if it doesn't work out, something will eventually come along and something will work out. And he's like, you know how good this thing is. Why are you worried? You know that they'll love it. You know that they'll love you. And no, you won't die before you get to produce it. He's like, stop it. And it's be- this one is basically how to, to not talk yourself out of what God is doing to accept it, to realize that whatever he's doing, you're worthy of it. Yes, you're worthy of it. Yes, you. Yes, you are worthy of whatever blessings he's bringing into your life. And no, you are not going to die before the blessing. You are going to see the blessing. Just receive the blessing. And and this blessing will not only bless you, but will bless your generations as well. And stop sabotaging yourself with the negative self-talk. Just like I did. I was like, um, why would they want to hear from me and whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm like... And the Lord said, why not? They're people. They may be uh, what the world calls famous people. But remember, in God's economy, there is no famous person. There is no non-famous person. That's all. That's all uh, world people, man-made. In God's economy... Everything's all level. So in God's economy, these celebrities are not greater than us because they have more financial stability or you see them on TV or on or listen to their music. In God's economy, the cross is level. The cross is for everybody. And as a child of God, we have as much right to to do to access um, anything than anyone else does, and because um, in the human world we put. In the natural world, I should say. The problem is we put people on levels like 
celebrities are here and rich people are here and pastors are here and we and we think that status is is everything. But in God's economy everything is is level. And he in fact he said in this season the least shall be greatest and the greatest shall be least. So he 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 made them he made celebrities as much as he made us and the reason why people build all these ridiculous things and he said he said tear all the lies down that you're not good enough that they won't like you that you know you can't get anywhere. Those are human lies. And when God opens the door, he opens it wide. And he's not only opening it wide for me, he's opening it wide for you. Whatever he's told you in the dark will come to pass. And you will be alive and well to see it. You will not die, but you will live. The world has convinced you that you you're not you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. But there's al- always going to be someone better, someone wiser, someone more adept than you. But God has called you. And when God puts you in a room, no one can, no one can kick you out. Understand who you are and whose you are. Understand that you are a child of the Most High God, and no, nothing, no one can say, will change that. And God will put you in rooms in this season that you won't even imagine. God will do things in this season in your life that will will make people stand up and take notice. But the first people he wants to stand up and take notice is you. Because, you know, you've been living with a low opinion of yourself for too long. You've been living with the lies of the enemy for too long. And he wants to know he wants you to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world world. And if he's working through you, there is nothing that he has assigned you to do that you can't do. There is absolutely nothing. No play you can't produce, no job you can't get, no man you can't get, that he's ordained you to get, that you won't get. The the key is making sure it's from him. And sometimes he won't let you make sure that it's from him. Sometimes it's Stepping on on a on a maybe like maybe this or maybe that, and sometimes he he'll give you signs to say go this way, and sometimes you'll just have to trust that you're walking in the same way, and sometimes even if that thing fails, that failure thing will be the catalyst for the thing that he wanted for you all along. Know that if you listen to his voice and listen to your spirit guide you, because he guides you through the spirit, and listen to your spirit to guide you, you will always um, end up where you want to be And yes, you will take a few wrong turns and make 
a few mistakes along the way, but that's life, and he will be with you in the mistakes, and he will turn your mistakes into his God steps. Um, and he loves you so much, and he loves you so much, and I believe that we call fa- what we call failure is just God aligning things and readjusting things and doing things the way um, that he wants to us, that he wants to do them if we let him take control um it's like it's like if you if you let a kid take control of the wheel the it may be the adult's car. The, the kid may be driving the adult's car, but um, uh, but the adult still has control over the car, although the, the steer, steering wheel might seem to be in the kids' hands, it's the adult's car at the end of the day, so it's their responsibility to make sure that kid is safe and to make sure that everything is running right. And they may let the kid make a few wrong turns so that they know um, this is not the way to go. I need to ease up on the brake here. Because, like it or not, people, mistakes are how we learn. And sometimes, um, and, and sometimes God needs to let, let us make our own mistakes and missteps because we need to learn. It doesn't mean the car is not his. It just means that as we drive, we may make a couple of wrong turns, but we will eventually get to where we're supposed to be. And we have to remember that the car is ultimately his, no matter if. He's driving the car, or or sometimes he will let us drive. Because sometimes we're like stubborn children. We're like, we want to drive, we want to drive, let me, let me, let me. So he'll say, okay, uh, I'll let you drive for a while, but know that I'm always here. So he's saying, I, I, he's saying, I'm letting you drive for a while, but know that I'm always here and know that nothing will happen to you that didn't go through my hand first. Know that you will always wind up where I want you to be. Just use your spirit as a guide. And sometimes he uses your mistakes and missteps to hone what he has inside you. uh, To perfect it. uh, To perfect your ears when it comes to listening to him. I always say, listening to him is... Listening to the Lord and His Spirit is so different when it um, it varies from person to person. How the Lord speaks to me is not how He speaks to you. How He communicates with me is not how He communicates with you. And you need to find out 
how he communicates with you and how he speaks to you because when he speaks to you uh, and you know his voice, you can follow his directions. And sometimes, most times, it becomes like second nature. Sometimes when you're starting out, like any relationship, it it's hard when you start out. But as you familiarize yourself with the voice of the Lord, it becomes easier to understand and react to his voice. A lot of people think a relationship with God is easy to to develop. You just read your Bible and whatever. No, it's not easy to develop. It takes time. It takes work. It takes uh, patience. It takes precision. It takes listening. And he just wants you today to start to start on whatever way uh, you see fit. And he'll he'll work with your schedule. He'll work with your proclivities. He'll work with your uh, propensities, personality. He knows you. He knows how to get you to where he wants you. And he wants you to know that you're not alone that he's always with you. And he knows how big this is. And he knows what steps you need to take. And that you're not alone. You may feel alone. It may feel rocky. But you are not alone in the dark. And he will be, he will be there. Uh, and you're not feeling feeling. Uh, alone in the dark. It may seem dark right now, like nobody's there, you're not hearing any voices or whatever, and you're feeling, and you're feeling alone, but he's, he's calling you right now and saying, I'm here. Just take one step, one little step. It doesn't need to be a big step. It could be a little step. And remember, I'm here for you. I love you. And I will never leave you alone. Yes, God, thank you for never leaving us alone in the storm. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for never leaving us alone, never forsaking us. Always being there for us. Always guiding us. You are God, and we love you, Lord. We bless you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of our hearts to the depths of our souls. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. So, so yes. the, mm, the Lord is saying to me right now, some of you are too afraid to step out. You keep on saying no, 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 because you're afraid. But there's no need to be afraid because the Savior walks with you. You don't walk alone. And there's no need to say no. All you have to say is yes. And I know that yes is hard. That yes is like, I don't know where we're going, but what wherever we're going, yes. And that kind of trust is hard, especially for people who don't trust easily who've been betrayed and let down and whatever. But the Lord just says, just trust me on a yes. I know it's hard. I know you don't trust me. And if you can't give a fully yes, you can say, yes, Lord. Uh, You can say, maybe the Lord. 
and he'll work with your baby. He'll get you to the yes. All he needs is some response. All he needs is, like, even if your hands are not fully open to receive, even half open, he'll work with you to get you to fully open. He'll work on trust. Because trust in any relationship is hard. And he knows where you've been scarred and where you've been abused. He knows all of that. And he loves you anyway. And he's not expecting you to, to be Superman or Superwoman and leap out all, all of those trust buildings all in one day. Just take one step at a time, even if it's hands half open or, you know, like, I I want to receive, but I'm scared. You can tell him, I want to trust you, but I'm scared crapless. What if this hurt? This hurts. Uh, what if this person breaks my heart? Or what if this doesn't work out? Where does that leave me? And he's saying, that's okay. Because whatever happens, good or challenging, weak or strong, I'll be with you. You're not alone in this. I love you too much to leave you alone. You can trust me. And if you don't fully right now, that's okay. He said, but I need some response from you. Some willingness. I need you to give just a little bit. The Bible says if you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So even if you have the tiniest bit of faith, that's okay. Even if you're not sure, that's okay. If you if you just say, Lord, maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice that the Lord is knocking on the door of your heart and you keep on saying no because you're scared. And he's saying, I understand. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been abused and molested. I know you've been rejected by those people. I know you don't believe that I will reject you. I I know you think that I'm false. I know you've tried all those other uh, religions before. But I love you. And I'm real as real can get. And even if you don't believe it all the way, You just need a little bit of belief to just take one tiny baby step. And if you fall on your butt, on your butt, going, that's okay. I'll be there to walk behind you. Have you ever seen, like, babies when they're trying to learn to walk that the mom's that the moms or the dads walk behind them uh, and they put their feet on top of, they put their, they have the baby's feet on top of their feet um, so that the baby gets used to the, the um, motion of walking. So that's what he's doing now. He wants to put your feet on top of his feet and show you how to walk. You're not walking by yourself. He's walking behind you. He's holding your hands like a baby and just walking behind you. He says, I know you have a walk this way before. But I'm here to show you how to walk. He says, I know you don't trust me, and that's okay. But we, 
he said, I'm, I love you so much that I want to start with you somewhere. And today he wants you to just say, okay, okay. He's, you, you'll be like, I don't know about this thing. I don't know about it all, but something that Rachel is saying is really getting to me. So even if you don't believe it all fully yet, even if you can't accept it all fully yet, that's okay. He just wants one little thing. He just wants you to budge a bit, and he'll show you how how to walk this thing out. It's not an easy road being a believer in Jesus Christ, but it is sure worth it. It is sure worth it because you'll have someone who will never, ever, ever let you go. The Bible says when you walk through the fire, he'll be there. You'll never get burned. Nothing will burn burn you while you're in the hand of God. People have gotten burned, abused, and misused, and he's saying, come on, come on. He's saying, what do you have to lose? What do you have to, you have nothing to lose in the whole world, world to gain, and all you have to do is just have a little bit of, a little bit of, trust and a little bit of faith even if it's minute he can work through minute and even if it's a maybe he can work through maybe and a lot of people say say the sinner's prayer I don't I don't do that because I believe at this moment the Lord wants to hear you not some canned words that I say that I tell you to say after me. The Lord wants to hear you. The Lord wants to hear your heart for him. The Lord wants to hear where you are. And he's dying to hear where you are. And he doesn't want just the kid words or prayer that I tell you to, to pray after me. He loves you so much that he wants to hear you. However you do it, that's what he wants to hear. It doesn't matter if it's good enough. It doesn't matter if you've prayed before. And if you haven't prayed before, it will seem weird because you're talking to walls and you're talking to the ceiling. But that's okay. You've looked stupid before for bad reasons. Look stupid now for the best reason of your life. Get ready for the best relationship of your life, the rockiest relationship of your life, the most life-changing relationship of your life. He wants to hear you. He wants you to know that you are valuable. You are loved. He celebrates you. He's cheering for you. And he just he just has such love for you. He he just has such love for you. He knows where you're at. He knows what you've been through. And he he just has such love for you. And he wants you to know how loved you are. I can't even explain rest how much love he has for you it's just it's just infinite it's bigger than this whole world bigger than this whole galaxy the love he has for you and there's nothing you can do to stop his love for you oh yes Thank you, Jesus, for all the dear souls.
that are coming to you right now. Thank you for, for your love. Thank you for all the dear souls that your love is getting to. Thank you for the dear souls that are receiving your kindness, receiving your strength. A lot of people are feeling weak today. He said, come on to me, all, all those who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest and sweet sleep today. In the name of Jesus, yes. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you strength. He wants to give you joy. But you've got to let him in even just a bit. He's got to see some give on your part. Relationships are about give and take. And he wants to give to you. Other people have taken from you. But the Lord right now wants to give to you. Wants to give to you so much. Thank you, Lord. Um, okay, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. See you next week. Bye.